Last night's Republican presidential primary debate was probably the best one so far, but it was also a disaster for many of the other candidates. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in with a new video today. It is time that we talk about the 2024 Republican presidential primary. Because as many of you know, and I think all of you probably do know, last night was the fourth presidential debate between Vivek Ramaswamy, Ron DeSantis, Chris Christie, and Nikki Haley. And I gotta say, surprisingly, this was probably the best overall debate. A lot of yelling, a lot of screaming, a lot of fighting, you know, aka a lot of entertainment. There was a new meme template that dropped, but I got to give it the news nation for actually asking probably the best questions. You know, they ask questions that people give a shit about like, hey, what are you going to do about Taiwan in a hypothetical invasion from China? What are you going to do about Israel? Are you going to send troops there? Etc. It was actual questions not some crap like fox news was pushing about what are you gonna do about the lgbtq plus community or crap like that it was like real policy questions but first before we continue with today's video i hope you enjoy these type of videos if you do smash the like button down below subscribe share with your friends hit that little bell follow the social media accounts in the description down below and of course, join the channel today. Guys, just for a dollar a month, you could join Real American. This is the best way to support the daily content that we all know and love. So I hope and recommend you join the channel today. All right, everybody. Now, let me be clear before we even start. Vivek Ramaswamy and Ron DeSantis won the debate. Those two had phenomenal performances. DeSantis not as good, but... Overall, it was his strongest debate. And I do think the debate with Newsom finally woke him up being like, hey, dude, you suck the past few debates. But he had a pretty good debate performance. But Ramaswamy came down with arguably one of the best debate performances of this entire cycle. I mean, the new meme template dropped because of him, but we'll get to that in a second. But overall, the biggest winner was Donald Trump. Trump won this debate not by showing up, and that was a good move. Because you had a lot of fighting, arguing, bickering. It was glorious. But it probably could have hurt Trump if he did show up, and he did make the right call. He's up by 50 to 60 points. Why risk it? And last night showed, yeah, it was overall a smart decision. But let's get into it. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie turned to his fellow candidates shortly after Wednesday's night presidential primary debate began and implored them to go after the man who wasn't there, former President Donald Trump. I'm looking at my watch now. We're 17 minutes into the debate, and except for your little speech in the beginning, we've had these three acting as if the race is between the four of us. He's stressed referring to his GOP rivals on stage. And he's not wrong. Like, Christie wasn't wrong about this, but... The way he's taken it's like, dude, you don't beat Trump by saying he's going to be a dictator. He's going to be a whatever, like he said on the debate stage. He said he's going to be a dictator. He's insane and all that crap. You go after him for policy, which I'll give him that. You can attack him for that, but Christie doesn't. He attacks him for some petty bull crap. Let's be real. You're just mad that Trump did not give you a job in the cabinet. That's what this comes down to. Not you don't you don't you want to stop Trump from being a dictator. That's baloney. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. He wouldn't be that bad if it wasn't for the Trump derangement syndrome. That's his problem. Trump, 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 Trump. Instead of policy reasons, just well, he stood behind closed doors a lie, and he's mean. It's absolutely stupid what Christie did, all right? I mean, it was a really bad debate by him. I mean, New York Times are claiming he won the debate. No, he didn't. He just pissed off the Trump base even more by saying, well, he's going to be a dictator and he's mean and all this crap. Do you really think that's going to suddenly flip a bunch of Trump voters? Really? 
it just was a baffling performance by Christie overall. Now, as for Ramaswamy, like I said, he gave some very fascinating answers. I mean, even related to Taiwan, instead of sending our boys to potentially die over there, he said, we got to prevent it from even happening. And he says, why not we arm the civilian population of Taiwan to the teeth? It worked in America. Why wouldn't it work in Taiwan? He asked. Which I think is a great point. You know, we have to deter China from even thinking about invading. I mean, you get these assholes up here saying, well, we got to make sure we send everything in the kitchen sink in Taiwan. How about, instead of focusing on that, we focus on preventing this from happening? And Robert Swami made a good point. And he went to Santis. We have to prevent this from even going to that point. We have to make sure China doesn't do it. Ramaswamy is saying, let's arm the population of Taiwan to the teeth. So China, if they invade, good luck. I like that answer. And I know Taiwan, you know, they don't have the Second Amendment, but still. I think that this is a smart thing that Ramaswamy said. And he did this the entire debate for foreign policy. That was his bread and butter tonight, or last night, foreign policy. I mean, this dude went after Nikki Haley about Ukraine. And in my opinion, this was the moment of possibly the entire year. That and when he called Christy fat, but we'll get to that in a second. When he asked Nikki Haley, just name three provinces from Ukraine, because she is supposedly an expert of foreign policy. Again, it's one thing to say, you know, we have to send, tr we have to provide aid for Ukraine. Fine. But to say, well, I'm a foreign policy expert and we have, I know what I'm talking about. Nobody else does. We have to send infinite money and potentially troops to Ukraine. And Ramaswamy asked the basic question, name three provinces in Ukraine. Because you're the foreign policy expert. And she couldn't say anything. She just stared at the camera. And Ramaswamy just saying, look at her. She's just staring. She doesn't know a damn thing about Ukraine. But she's supposedly a foreign policy expert? She can't even say the Donbass region. She doesn't even know what that is. And she wants to send possibly troops over there? When you can't even name the provinces we're fighting for? What? And that's what I'm saying. Ramaswamy went after these bozos for being intellectual frauds, which they are. Haley's a fraud because she's supposedly a foreign policy expert that doesn't know a damn thing about Ukraine. She couldn't even point out where it is on a map. That is Ramaswamy at his peak. And it was just a baffling debate by Haley. She didn't even defend it. She just stood there, just staring. But... It's not even to that point. When you get the corruption stuff, you know what Haley said about the corruption? Right? You scroll down here. She doesn't say a thing. She says, well, I get a lot of support from big donors, but, you know, that's not a problem. That's not corruption. It's like, what? You're doubling down on getting huge amounts of support from big donors and supposedly you're not going to be a corrupt politician when you were in bed with, with freaking Boeing. And Ramaswamy gave a really good point. I mean, look at this. After she finished, Ramaswamy attacked her for the news that broke this week that prominent Democratic donor Reid Hoffman had given her $250,000 to her allied super PAC. Hoffman, he said, is effectively George Soros Jr. I mean, she's just... She just said, I oppose the Wall Street bailouts when many Republicans supported them. whoop the freaking do You supported Boeing th sending a lot of people going homeless in South Carolina. You have a history of corruption. You have a history of, wait a minute, your net worth went from like $100,000 to $8 million in two years? Wait a second, what's going on here? When she was the UN ambassador? But she joined all these board memberships and has close ties to Wall Street. But the best moment 
I think visually, was when Ramaswamy pulled up the clipboard and said, Nikki equals corrupt. Because she refused to answer any of this. She just said, well, I opposed Wall Street 20 years ago. Who cares? What about now? You are in bed with a lot of these big companies now. Who freaking cares 15 years ago when you were no name? Who cares? And she just said, oh, that's nothing. And it was just a baffling performance by Haley the entire night. Social media verification. She said this, every person on social media should be verified by their name. Which is absurd. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <clears throat> I mean, why? Why would you say that? There's no reason to support this. You know what happens? The government gets the name ID of every single person on social media. You know what they're going to do? Knock down your doors at 3 a.m. if you dare criticize them. That's what's going to happen. She doesn't care, though. We have to stop Iran and China. What? The bots are supposedly a big problem. I'm not denying that, but you're going to force people to give up their name there. Um force them to name themselves on social media? It's utterly insane, but it just keeps going. Then you had TikTok, where, according to Haley, <clears throat> I don't know where she got this from, Haley claims for every 30 minutes that someone watches TikTok every day, they become 17% 17 more, 17 more anti-Semitic, more pro-Hamas, Haley claimed. Seventeen percent. How the hell are you supposed to measure that? Thirty minutes? It just the more she talked, the more of a freaking hole she dug. Then she said, "If you're an anti-Zionist, you know, not anti-Semite. If you're just an anti-Zionist or not even pro-Zionist, guess what? She calls you, and she said she would classify that as anti-Semite. You heard that right." She said, you're an anti-Semi if you're not a Zionist. She would redefine the definition. My God, do you know how many Jewish people are, are anti-Zionist? Boy, they're surely anti-Semites in the Jewish community now. It's just, it's absolutely baffling. Her performance was a complete and total mess. And Ramaswamy and even DeSantis... Point out rightfully, it's like, hey, you know, you have a sketchy past when it comes to Wall Street. You're saying all this stuff about how we need a Patriot Act 2.0. You're talking about how you're, if you're not a Zionist, you're anti-Semi. You just keep going on and on in the trans stuff. Haley said the government has no business being involved in it. <laughs> just <laughs> this performance by Haley was beyond an F tier. Christy got an F. She made Christy look like an intellectual genius. That's how pathetic this was. It's all over the place. I could keep going on and on, but it's a disaster. And of course, New York Times are claiming she did better than DeSantis. DeSantis had his best debate. I give him a 7 out of 10. Ramaswamy, I give a 9 out of 10, maybe a 10 out of 10. There's some answers here and there that are a little shaky on, like the woke industrial complex, but outside of that, Haley got like a below zero. That's how bad this was. But either way, folks, it was an entertaining debate. I actually had a lot of fun watching. I thought it was going to be boring, but I like the fighting. We need more of it. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Thank you so much, Godspeed, to all of you.